So what are the best educational tools and resources to use in medical school and residency? I want to get to those in this video. Let's get to it. All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome to another episode in the TMJ show and the MD journey. We're here. We're all about helping people just like you succeed on their medical journey with less stress. My name is Lux. I'm currently an internal medicine resident making videos, blog posts, podcasts, you name it for the last three years to help individuals just like you. So if you are new to this channel, if you are new to this community, go ahead and definitely consider subscribing, following us on podcasts. If you're watching this on YouTube and hitting that subscribe button and that notification bell. And after this video, if you enjoy the content, then also consider hitting that like button. But in this video, I wanted to give you a quick rundown. It's going to be a rapid fire kind of style of all the different resources that I use as an actual practicing physician, as well as things that I use in medicine school that I still use to today. And after this video, if you guys want to learn more, then down below there'll be a link to kind of a resource tab that we have on the website on the mdjourney.com that you guys can check out for more links as well as potential discounts. And with that, I just want to get into it. I'm not going to talk too much about each resource. I'm going to give you a nice brief overview and kind of explain how I use it, uh, as well as giving you information that you guys can check out down below in the description. So let's start with one of my favorite resources. It's kind of an umbrella resource that has a lot of underlining uh, amazing resources within it and that is through the New England Journal of Medicine. Now I'm obviously a physician in internal medicine so there's a lot of content that is pertinent to me but also to other specialties including pediatrics, ob So One of the things that I love using are the actual physical journals. I usually have one sitting on my desk and I usually will put a mark next to any important articles, usually the review article as well as the interesting case for the week that I like to read. Uh, but you can also look at those online you have access to the institution. Now another element of the New England Journal that I absolutely love using are the interactive cases and these are things that I've mentioned in previous episodes but basically what they are is they kind of take their interesting cases from the week and they make a nice kind of start to finish element on practicing your clinical acumen. Can you see their history presentation and kind of come up with the diagnosis? Um, can you try to see what kind of forms of treatment you would give the patient and it kind of walks you through how to consider and evaluate so such a patient with a condition. Definitely check out these interactive cases, especially if you have institutional access to your med school or your residency program to be able to kind of give yourself a little bit of practice and they only take like 10 minutes. Next up on my list, and this is also because I'm interested in cardiology and internal medicine, um, is EKG wave payment. So this is made by a sister institution of Harvard Medical School. Um, and basically you have these amazing kind of case-based EKGs um, that will test you on kind of ABC multiple choice. But then the beauty is that they'll walk you through everything that was wrong with an EKG. So not only is it, you know, what the heart rate is or what the one abnormality is, but you can tell what's going on in every single EKG lead. It gives you a little bit of practice doing pattern recognition. This way you can get better at EKGs in the long run. And speaking of EKGs, and this is going on to resource number three, and is one that I used when I was a med student, is the Life in the Fast Lane blog. And this was originally designed for emergency medical physicians as well as clinical care doctors, uh, but it's really so useful for essentially everybody. Um, the EKG sections are really what I consider to be the best ones. They'll walk you through every kind of element of an EKG. So like we're here, we're talking about atrial fibrillation. I'll tell you kind of what the reasons, the causes, and what's going on, as well as give you examples of EKG strips um, that will be consistent with somebody with HIV. So if you're trying to learn your basic EKGs, or if you're interested in going into emergency medicine and you want to learn other things like toxicology and ultrasound, definitely check out Life in the Fast Lane. Now one thing that I love using and that students and physicians love as well is a resource known as UpToDate. Most of you guys probably know it, so I'm not going to belabor the point, but it's essentially a Wikipedia for everything medically related. And it's a great resource to use if you quickly need to look up something like the dose of the medication, or the types of treatments as we should be able to use for specific type of diagnosis. But it is also something that I like to read kind of from start to finish. For example, I was recently teaching my medical students on one of my rotations about renal tubular acidosis, and it's been a while since I've learned it myself. And so it's something that I went in, just quickly refreshed myself and scanned, and then created my own diagnostic schema that I previously didn't have. So if you're using up to date, amazing to see if you can start creating a list of things you don't know and then quickly look up a few of them and just read the up to date section on them to see if you can become more advanced in your medical knowledge about those particular topics. So next up, we'll talk about a few resources that I love recommending to med students. And one of them is a resource that kind of came to my attention uh, late last year. And this is a resource called Physio, which basically creates a lot of video content as well as question banks that comes with the videos um, at the very end, flashcards, audio, just a lot of different 
resources on anything you learn throughout your first and second year of med school. So if you're learning a lot of basic foundational medicine, and you want an all-in-one resource to not only help you when you're taking step one, but also help you in your classes, then definitely check it out. I mean, I've made a full review video um, on Physio as well, so you guys can check out the link in the description. If it is something you guys are interested in after you're watching that review video um, or checking the link out, then definitely um, consider getting the 15% discount, which will also link down below. There'll be a code for you guys to check. A resource that's very similar and close to my heart that I use a lot at medical school is Online Med Ed. And specifically, one resource that I've been using more often than now than in residency is a resource called KSEX, which basically will take you from start to finish of a diagnosis and helps you kind of understand how to be a doctor outside of the multiple choice um, examples that we given when we are med students. And similar to previous resources, everything will be linked down below in the description, including a link to KSACs. Now one resource that I really used a lot in medical school because I am a big visual learner is Picmonic. So one thing I loved about Picmonic, and I've also made a video about this before too, is that the videos are very short, they're entertaining, the images are goofy enough that I can remember important concepts. I mean, I'm not having to sit through 20 to 30 minutes of a video to learn a concept like bacterial endocarditis. The nice thing about Picmonic is you can also create playlists. So as you're going through a class, you can start to add the videos as you're learning the topics and reading about them. In class, if you're on your hematology blog, you can start to add a variety of cancers and malignancies and anemias and blood disorders that you'll be learning about. And so it's a nice way to review yourself. It also comes with quizzes and a bunch of other resources that are super useful. And again, if you guys are interested, there'll be a discount link down below. Now, the last few things in this rapid fire clinical resource video are basically apps and podcasts that I listen to, usually on the way into work, and I use them throughout the day. Um, and one of them that I've started using recently is called the Human DX Project. Um, and it's basically an amazing, amazing app where different physicians around the country, around the world, are presenting cases in what we consider aliquots. So they're giving you little pieces of information about a patient, their presentation. Then they're asking you, using that information, what would be your differential diagnosis? What do you consider? Um, and then when you're ready, you can click for the next piece of information, like their vitals, the next piece of information, like their labs. And each kind of part of the journey, you're kind of challenged to see, can you get to the diagnosis quicker using the information you already have? At the very end, obviously, they'll reveal it, as well as give them some teaching points and clinical pearls that you can then take with you. So it's an amazing resource to be able to use real life cases to learn some true medicine. Um, and they're very easy to do and quick to do. I usually do about four to five cases in the morning um, before actually getting to work. I was on my way from the hospital garage um, to my rounding room. Now, similar to the Human Diagnostic Project, one of my favorite podcasts um, in regards to medical school and residency is the Clinical Problem Solvers uh, Diagnosis Podcast, which basically will again present a patient with a chief complaint and then it has a podcast with professionals, residents, as well as attendings across the country who will discuss amongst themselves and evaluate what each piece of information may mean regarding the final diagnosis of a patient. They're very entertaining podcasts, they're funny, but they're also super educational. It's something that I listen to on my drive into work um, and it makes me get into that medical mindset. So I definitely recommend you guys check out the podcast. I can't speak more highly of the quality of work that they do um, and the benefits that people like me are able to get in furthering their medical journey. And finally, the last resource that I loved using, particularly when I was in night rotation, but this is also something you can use when you're a clinical student on rotations and there's just a lot of things you don't know, as well as when you're a resident and you're covering different patients or you're doing uh, a night coverage, is an app called MD On Call. It's basically kind of um, an on the phone Wikipedia system where you can quickly type in diagnosis as well as chief complaints. And then it'll give you a nice brief overview of what type of things to think about, what labs to order, what treatments to offer. Um, it's just a nice way of kind of having something to go back on if you're confused or not sure what to do. But that guys is a roundup of the different clinical resources that I've been using in both medical school and now in residency. I mean, I really use all of these to some extent on a weekly basis and some even on a daily basis multiple times a day. I mean, if there are more resources that you guys use, maybe I missed one that I probably used and just kind of left my mind, um, go ahead and drop them in the comment section down below. I'd love to see what you guys are using to progress and help you on your medical journey. And anything you mentioned that maybe I haven't been familiar with or haven't used myself, I could definitely check out. And then if it's, if it's awesome, like you say it is, then I can recommend it to the rest of our community. And as I mentioned at the start of the episode, all the resources we talked about 
this video will be linked down below. Uh, but if you do also want more resources that are similar, or if you want to check out potential discounts for some of our resources that we do recommend, then check out the link for themdjourney.com and it'll take you to our recommended tools page as well. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you somehow made it to the end, you enjoyed the content, you haven't hit that like button, help the video, help the community, help me. Small, small ask smash that like button before you leave and again if you're new to the community and you're considering subscribing but you haven't hit that button give us a shot go ahead and hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell I'm trying to put out videos for you on twice a week basis to give you content just like this thank you guys so much for tuning in watching on youtube listening on the podcast thank you so much for being a part of my journey hopefully i've been a little help to you on yours i'll see you guys in the next one peace